we begin with a definition. A flow network consists of, among other things, a directed graph G, and we will disallow anti-parallel edges to simplify some of the equations. This is not a serious limitation, as we'll see. We'll distinguish two special vertices in the graph. A source, typically labeled S, this is where whatever is flowing through the network starts from, and a sink, typically labeled T, this is where the flow ends up. We call all other vertices internal. To keep our equations a little simpler, we'll assume there are no incoming edges into S or outgoing edges from T. Associated with every pair of vertices is a capacity, which indicates how much flow it is possible to send directly between two vertices. We'll assume that these capacities are always non-negative integers. This will make some of the arguments easier, and it's not a serious limitation. In fact, the last algorithm we see will overcome it. Also note that if there is no edge in the graph, then the capacity is defined to be zero. That's the flow network. The flow itself is a function from pairs of vertices to the non-negative reals. Clearly then, it must be non-negative, and it can't exceed the capacity for any pair of vertices. Also, we require that between any two vertices, at least one direction be zero. It doesn't make sense to have flow going from one vertex to another, only to send it back again. Lastly, we require that flow be conserved at every internal vertex. We define F in to be the flow into a vertex, and F out to be the flow out, and we require that the two be equal. So for example, in this node here, I have four plus two coming in, and I have five plus one going out. These are both six, so we say that flow is conserved at this vertex. Intuitively, this just means that internal nodes can't generate or absorb any of the stuff that's flowing. Those are the jobs of the source and of the sink. The overall value of the flow is defined as the flow going out of the source, or equivalently, the flow going into the sink.